You might have someone in your family, subhanAllah, who doesn't practice Islam. And you say, ah, oh, so I've already called him to pray five times. Ikhwa, as long as you're here breathing in this dunya, you're obligated to keep calling them. <laughs> you're obligated to keep calling them unless they take out an axe and chase you down the road. That's when you stop, you say, okay, Habibi, that's enough, no more. <clears throat> Up until then, you keep calling them. You think the messenger stopped? No. He said, Ayy Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Khuffat al Jannah bi bi makarihi wa khuffat al Nari bi shahawati. Ayy Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what did he say? He said, Paradise is surrounded by difficulties. Jannah is surrounded, surrounded by difficulties. And the fire is surrounded by desires. Everything your soul desires, it's around the it's around the, the fire. It doesn't matter. Everyone can be given advice. Adinu <clears throat> nasiha. He said, Everyone can be given advice. Don't be tricked. Do you say, oh, he's, he's, this guy is too pious, or this guy is too big, or this guy knows too much, I don't want to give him any advice. Everyone should be receptive to advice. Advice corrects us, subhanAllah, and sets us back, nudges us back a little, onto the right path. Because we all, subhanAllah, we all go left or right. I'm gonna go yelling at a guy, you, 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 you mubtadiya, kafir, uh, he's gonna knock you out. You're gonna approach someone nicely, in a nice manner, with nice akhlaq, with nice adab, and say, Habibi, this is, this is the issue. Do you know about such and such? Who told you this and that? Enjoining good, forbidding evil. With what? with the manners of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He says, يَسِّرُ وَلَا تُؤَسِّرُ وَبَشِّرُ وَلَا تُنَفِّرُ Facilitate things to people. Make it easy for them. In Alhamdulillah, نَحْمَدُهُ وَنَسْتَعِينُهُ وَنَسْتَغْفِرُهُ وَنَعُوذُ بِلَاهِ مِنْ شُرُورِ أَنفُسِنَا وَمِنْ سَيَّاتِ آمَالِنَا مَنْ يَحْدِهِ لَاهُ فَلَا مُدِلَّ لَهُ وَمَنْ يُدْلِلْ فَلَا هَادِيَ لَهُ وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي هلككم من نفس واحدة وخلك منها زوجاها وبث منهما رجال كثيرة ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به وبرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقلوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يتع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ثم ما بعد فإن حير الكلام كلام الله عز وجل وحير الحدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وإن شر الأمور مخدثاتها وكل مهدثة بدعة وكل بدعة دلالة وكل دلالة في النار My brothers, my family, my Allah Azawajal bless you for attending We as men, as human beings, subhanAllah, we become forgetful We become forgetful and we're prone to mistakes. So as we travel through this life in the dunya, we make mistakes around. And of the best people who make mistakes are those who try and correct them. The nafs and the shaitan pulls to one side. The shahawat, they pull to the other side. The nafs pulls to another side. There's things everywhere, subhanAllah, pulling us away from the Sirat al Mustaqim. And when bodies, subhanAllah, in the world, we know that when we get sick, we go to the doctor. Something aches, something hurts, we've got an issue somewhere on our body, we go to the doctor. When our children cry, we don't know what's wrong with them, we rush them to, to the doctor. And such is the case with our souls, with us, subhanAllah. What if the disease becomes a spiritual one? Souls and hearts, subhanAllah, we know in Islam that the heart, the soul, it's almost like a separate entity. 
I've said this many times before. We look at the works of Ibn Qayyim, we will look at the works of Ibn Taymiyyah and they, they've written books just on the heart, diseases of the heart. And you read these books, subhanAllah, and they, they go into detail about the diseases of the hearts and how to cure them. And subhanAllah, every time the cure is what? It's returning back to Allah Azza wa Jal. It's as simple <coughs> as that. You say it and it sounds so simple. When we get the, a sick heart, we go back to, to Allah Azza wa Jal. We return to Allah. We ask the cure from Allah Azza wa Jal. We stop doing that which was forbidden. And the people, subhanAllah, they do things on a daily basis, such as adultery. Or they shed blood of innocent people. They drink alcohol. They oppress people, subhanAllah. People are oppressed throughout this dunya, subhanAllah. You look at different lands, different countries, different cities, and you see that people are oppressed like the way were Muslims in, in China, subhanAllah. They're so oppressed that they barely exist, subhanAllah. They can barely breathe. So people are oppressed and people are oppressing and people are committing sins on a daily, daily basis, subhanAllah. This is, a, this is just the way of the son of Adam, everybody. They consume the wealth of people unlawfully. And it goes on and on without having to list everything. And then there's people who also prevent people from returning back to Allah Azza wa Jal. Pre preventing, what do they do? They stand in the way. So you start to walk from point A to point B, but there's someone in the middle of the, of the path, and now you've got to what? You've got to change your track. You've got to change your route. You've got to go around them. So there's people out there, if what, and what they do is, they prevent those the sick ones from returning back to Allah. And of course, the diseases of the heart affect us as Muslims much more than the diseases of the body. It affects our akhirah. We as Muslims, we work every single day to what to achieve a, a status, a lofty status in the life that's coming, the everlasting life. That which Allah Azza wa has promised us. So the disease of the heart is much more severe for the Muslim. So we now need to find a, we need to find a cure. Now why did I start the khutbah speaking about diseases of the heart? When in reality I want to talk about enjoining good and forbidding evil. The diseases of the hearts are so many. And many of them affect us in a way that we're not able to enjoin good and forbid evil. We're not able to do we're not able to call people to hire and reject the, the munkar, the evil, the bad. Because what? Because our hearts are full of disease. So Allah Azza wa Jal has enjoined upon the believers, upon us, to treat these diseases by enjoining good. And forbidding that which is evil. Allah says in Surah Al-Iman, وَلْتَكُونَ مِنْكُمْ أُمَّةٌ يَدَعُونَ إِلَى الْحَيْرِ وَيَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَيَنْحَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمَ الْمُفْلِحُونَ Allah Jalla Allah says, Let there arise from you a group of people calling to all that is good. What's all that is good? Islam. That's all that is good. There's nothing else you have to call to. You call people to Islam, once they accept Islam, once they come into Islam, everything else falls into place. All the pieces of the puzzle fit together easy. So what is Allah saying? Let amongst you come a group of people inviting to all that is good. All of the Mufassirin said, what is the good here? Allah means that they said Islam. Nothing else. Islam, enjoining ma'roof. What is Allah just saying here? Tawheed, the Mufassirin say. Even the, the extreme Sufi Mufassirin, they say Tawheed. Monotheism, Islamic monotheism. This is what Islam orders want to do. What Islam orders us to do? 
to single out Allah Azza wa Jal in worship, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not associate partners with him. This is what Allah Azza wa Jal says in Surah Al-Imran. He says, enjoin the, enjoin the ma'roof, the tawheed, and reject the, the munkar, forbid the munkar. Allah Azza wa Jal saying, forbid the munkar. Forbid it. Make it haram. What's the munkar? Polytheism. Shirk. Kufr. Anything and everything that Allah Azza wa Jal made haram is munkar. Anything and everything that Allah Azza wa Jal and His Messenger alayhi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said was haram is munkar. Whether it is kufr, whether it is a bid'ah, whether it is a shirk, whether it is a, an amasya, one of the major sins from the kabair of the sins, whatever it might be, this is the munkar. So we call people to hayr, we call them to ma'roof, to Islam. And we forbid everything except for it. And it's very simple, subhanAllah. As I said in the beginning, very beginning of the khutbah. We need a doctor, we go to the doctor. We need uh, a cure for a dead heart. We turn to Islam. We open the mushaf. We read the words of Allah Azza wa Jal. They soothe the hearts of the believers. This is the, this is the cure. And Allah Azza wa Jal finishes the ayat and he says, وَأُولَيْكَ هُمَ الْمُفْلِحُونَ وَأُولَيْكَ هُمَ الْمُفْلِحُونَ And they are those people, the ones who forbid the evil and enjoy the good, they are the successful ones. That's it. They're the successful ones. You want success? Enjoying good and forbid the evil. Simple as that. Now, enjoining good and forbidding evil, subhanAllah, has been written so much about and it's been spoken so much about in the books that the ulama of the Muslims have written. It's such an important duty, subhanAllah. And one of the most noblest, sublime things one can be involved in. All of the messengers came with this, with this, with the same uh, idea, with the same order from Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah Jalla wa says in Surah An-Nisa, رسول مبشرين ومنذرين إلا لا يكون للناس على الله حجة بعد الرسل فكان الله عزيزا حكيما. Allah Azza wa Jal says, Rusulan mubashirina wal munzirina. The messengers came as those who proclaim glad tidings. They're mubashirina. They're for the people who proclaim the high, the good, the nice things that will happen. But they also, but they also, wal munzirina. Also those who warned people. So they said, so the people, they came and they said, Allah Azza wa Jal has created paradise for you. And all you have to do is single him out in worship. All of the messengers, all of them said the same thing. Every messenger, every, all of them, peace be upon all of them. All of them came with the same message. They said to the people, Allah Azza wa Jal has prepared gardens beneath which rivers flow with palaces for you. You'll live there eternally, forever young, never sick, never hungry, never thirsty. You can have what you wish. And all you have to do is what? Single out Allah Azza wa Jal and worship. Single him out, Azza wa Jal. That's all you got to do. But they warned and they said also to the people, but if you do not, then there's a fire whose fuel is men and stones. Allahu, Allahu Musta'an. So Allah Azza wa Jal made the Muslim Ummah the greatest of the Ummah. Of all of the Ummah, of all of the Ummahs before us, before the Ummah of Muhammad of all of them, of all of the Anbiya, of all of the messengers that came, 124,000 in one narration. All of them had a Ummah that followed them. Of all of them, you have been blessed to be the best of them. Allah Jalla wa Allah says, "Kuntum hayri ummatin ukhrijat li nasi, ta'amuruna bil ma'aruf, 
وتنحون عن المنكر فتؤمنون بالله You are the true believers You You the followers of Muhammad ibn Abdullah alayhi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam You the followers of, of him You are the best of the people Ever raised up for mankind Who saying this? Al-Halik subhanahu wa ta'ala Allahu azza wa jal He's giving you the best The best Words that a believer can hear He's saying you are the best of people Raised up Who raises people up? Allahu azza wa jal And he decided azza wa jal To raise you to be The best of them Of all of them You enjoy monotheism again. Surah Al Imran, 110th ayat. The Mufassirin say, they, What's the ma'arufiyah Allah Azza wa Jal is talking about? They say, Tawheed. Monotheism. Singling out Allah Azza wa Jal. You enjoy Al Ma'aruf, Islamic monotheism. All that Islam has ordained. Everything that Allah Azza wa Jal has told us to do. And you forbid the munkar. Disbelief, <coughs> polytheism, kufr, shirk. You stay away from it, subhanAllah, just like you, just like you keep your hands away from the fire. You light a barbecue in your yard, try putting your hand under that, in that fire. Five seconds. Now imagine the fire, subhanAllah, that's, that's awaiting those who, who don't believe it. And it comes to subhanAllah, it comes to the simple, simple fact. How can one believe in Islam? How can one claim belief? How can one practice Islam day in and day out? We know that Islam for us is, it's not once a week. Like the Christians, uh, they go to the church once uh, every Sunday or they go on Easter or on Christmas once a year. For us, for the people of Tawheed, we know Islam is five daily prayers. We know Islam is that we can't pray unless we've been, uh, unless we've done wudu. We know that after intercourse, there's a shower, a ghusl that follows. We have rules in place. We practice it every single day. Day in and day out. We wake up with Bismillah. We lie down with Bismillah. Whatever we do, we say Bismillah. In the name of who? Of Allah Azza wa Jal. So how can one claim to be a believer? And they themselves witness the beauty of Islam. You think these kuffar that are fighting the Muslims, you think they don't see the beauty of Islam? Last week I spoke about it, I said, I was talking about the Mutrifun, the people who spread false news. It's true that they spread false news. But do you think they're so blind they can't see the beauty of Islam? They can't see that they're using instruments today, today, to operate on people that were invented six, seven, eight hundred years ago? Who invented them? The Pope? Benedict? No. Muslims! The same ones. You don't think they see the beauty of Islam? Of course they see it. Allah Azza wa Jalla sealed their hearts though. Their hearts have been sealed. They see the beauty. They recognize it, but they won't acknowledge it. Now how can one who practices and sees the beauty of Islam, understand Islam, understands the mercy, understands compassion, understands peace, tranquility, being good to your neighbor, to your parents. How can one be like this and not call others to it? Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا And the best of you, and who is better in speech? Allah is saying, وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا And who is better in speech, in the speech? دَعَى إِلَى اللَّهِ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي 
من المسلمين who is better is speech who of you is better saying Allah is saying there's no one better there's no one better except the one who invites to Allah there's no one better ومن أحسن قولا and who is better this is the in Arabic subhanallah this means there's no one better than the one who calls to Allah the one who calls people to Allah to Islam ومن أحسن قولا ممن دعا إلى الله and who's better in speech than the one who invites to Allah and there's righteousness and says I indeed am from the Muslimin. I am indeed proudly, proudly, me. I am from the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and I will die on as the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. There's no one better. This is as good as it gets. Allah is saying, there is no one better. Call to Islam. Call the people around you to to Allah azza wa jalla. Hold them to the mercy, the compassion that Allah Azza wa Jalla spread out, but they won't accept it because they've got a disease in their in their hearts. There's no better ma'roof than calling people to Islam. بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تمسك بسنته بإحسان إلى يوم دين أما بعد الله عز وجل سز من سورة علي مران من سورة علي مران يسز عز وجل ولا تحنوا ولا تحزنوا وأنتم الألون إن كنتم مؤمنين الله جل وعلا says do not weaken do not be sad do not cry do not grieve do not, do not be from the people who are constantly subhanallah they, they're grieving they, they think they're weak they think they're uh, being uh, subjugated to, 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 to lower things you will be superior. Allah Azza wa Jalla is saying you will be <coughs> superior in kuntum mu'mineen if you truly, if you truly are believers. So Allah Azza wa Jalla is putting it out there saying do not be sad, do not weaken, do not be of the people who are constantly complaining, crying about the situation they're in. You will be superior in kuntum mu'mineen. If you truly believe you will be superior. Allah Azza wa Jalla is saying you'll be superior. Don't, don't be, don't be weak. Don't think it's game over. Don't think oh, I've tried and now, oh, well, I tried it. You might have someone in your family, subhanAllah, who doesn't practice Islam. And you say, ah, oh, so I've already called him to pray five times. Ikhwa, as long as you're here breathing in this dunya, you're obligated to keep calling them. <laughs> You're obligated to keep calling them unless they take out an axe and chase you down the road. That's when you stop, you say, okay, Habibi, that's enough, no more. <clears throat> Up until then, you keep calling them. You think the messengers stopped? Look at uh, Abu Sufyan. Look, read the seerah of the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa Look up Abu Sufyan, that's what I'm telling you. Look Abu Sufyan and read about Abu Sufyan before he became a Muslim and when he became a Muslim. Look at Abbas ibn Abdul Muttalib. Abbas radiallahu anhu wa Who is he? Uncle of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Brother to who? To Hamza radiallahu anhu wa Look when Abbas became a Muslim. Do you think the messenger Ali Sallallahu he stopped calling him to Islam? They fought battles against one another. And he still called him to Islam. Did he succeed? Well, alhamd, he did. Of course he succeeded. But I want you to look up when you have your time, 
باذن الله عز وجل لوك اب ابو سفيان ان لوك اب اباس رضي الله عنه ورضوا ورضوا عنه نعم الله جل وعلا is constantly to finish off the khutbah quickly باذن الله what are the dearest deeds to Allah azza wa jal what's the dearest deed to Allah azza wa jal that we can call people to i just mentioned it a minute ago what is the thing that Allah azza wa jal expects us to do Allah azza wa jal says wama halaktu ajinna wal insa illa illa liya'budun i did not create the men or the jinn except to worship so Allah azza wa jal is expecting us to what worship him He's not expecting us to gather at Hungry Jack's and eat uh, quarter pounders. He's expecting us to what? To gather like this and worship him, single him out, Azza wa Jal. Nothing is like unto him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. We single him out, he has no partners. Subhanahu. So Allah Azza wa Jal has created us to what? To worship him. So what's the dearest deed to him? Abdullah ibn Masood radiallahu anhu, he asked the messenger. قال سألت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال أي العمل أفضل يا رسول الله أي شيء؟ says he asked the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم what is the best action what do you think he said قال عليه الصلاة والسلام الصلاة الصلاة لي لوقتها the pray on its time man pray on its time you want to know the best action Pray when it's time to pray. Pray when it's time to pray. قال عبد الله بن مسعود قلت ثم أيهم يا رسول الله. He says and then I asked and then what? He said عليه الصلاة والسلام برؤل برؤل والدين kindness to parents. Kindness to parents, man. Pray your prayer on time and be good to your parents. Abdullah ibn Masood said, I said, then what? He said, then what? He said, then what? He said, then what? After you're praying on time. Then what? He said, then what? He said, then what? He said, then what? After you're praying on time. After you're being good to your parents. You're doing what? You're calling to good. You're forbidding the evil. Then Abdullah ibn Asud said, and then after all of this, Ya Rasulullah, what then? And said, Jihadu fi sabirillah. And then the hadith is long, he says, and I stopped asking the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, because Abdullah ibn Asud was struck by this. These are the sahaba, subhanallah. These are the companions of our beloved, alayhi wa sallam. Now, is the road going to be easy for you? Will it be the roses and butterflies? No. No. He said, Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, خفت الجنة ب ب مكاره وخفت النار بشهوات Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What did he say? He said, Paradise is surrounded by difficulties. Jannah is surrounded surrounded by difficulties, and the fire is surrounded by desires. Everything your soul desires, it's around the it's around the the fire. Now, quickly, Ikhwah, to finish off. SubhanAllah, I keep saying to finish off. Enjoining good. Amr al-Maruf wa nahayin al-Muk. And forbidding the evil. This mission will not end illa yawm al-Qiyana. All the way until the yawm al-Qiyana. All the way until the Day of Judgment. It's obligatory upon the Ummah of Muhammad Ali Shalfa. Rules. Us, the subjects of Allah Azza wa Jal. It's obligatory on every man and woman that says La ilaha illallah. He said, Sallallahu alayhi wa He says, whoever sees an evil, then let him do one of three things. But the Sahaba, subhanAllah, they were wondering what he was going to say. He says, let him change it by his hand if he's able to. You see an evil, change it by the hand. You come home, you see a bee bottle, you take it, you put it in the rubbish. Change it by the hand. And he says, if you're not able to change it by the hand, use your tongue. Speak up against it. Say something about it. Make it known, I don't accept this. And he said, and if you cannot even do that, and at least hate it in your heart. 
And this is in Sahih Muslim. He says, except the one when you hate it in the heart, it's the weakest of the faith. It means your iman is the, the lowest. Now we as an ummah, subhanallah, how many of us here are from different parts of the world, originating? Majority of us, subhanallah, we come from different points on the, on the globe. But the ummah is one nation, subhanallah. Hmm? Not Pauline Hansen is one nation, one nation, one ummah. So, if the circumstances turn bad, and corruption becomes widespread in this ummah, we feel it as well. Because we're all part of one body. Huh? He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the ummah is one body. If it's, if, if it's stung by a bee, the head feels it, the arm feels it. So if corruption becomes widespread, we feel it as an ummah, subhanAllah. Is the ummah corrupted? SubhanAllah, of course it is. As long as men are controlling lands and controlling money and controlling people, of course there's going to be corruption, subhanAllah. Does this stop us now from progressing? Of course not. Of course not. We, which we, we, we avoid these things. We stay away from these types of things. But we continue on the straight path that Allah Azza wa Jalla set out to us. And my brother's advice to myself first and foremost. Normally, subhanAllah, Uncle Hisham, he uh, whenever I make a mistake, he checks me. He tells me such and such, such and such, correct me, subhanAllah. May Allah Jalla Allah reward you and give him long life full of good deeds. Doesn't matter how righteous a person may look to you. Doesn't matter how righteous they may look. Doesn't matter if their beard is down to, the, to their knees. Doesn't matter how big the stomach is. Doesn't matter how many kilometers he's wrapped around his head of that uh, uh, It doesn't matter. Everyone can be given advice. Adinu nasiha, he said, Everyone can be given advice. Don't be tricked. Do you say, oh, he's, he's, this guy is too pious, or this guy is too big, or this guy knows too much, I don't want to give him any advice. Everyone should be receptive to advice. Advice corrects us, subhanAllah, and sets us back, nudges us back a little onto the right path. Because we all, subhanAllah, we all go left or right. Um, it's difficult to maintain that balance. But this is where we come in as brothers, together, to balance each other, to advise one another, to correct one another. May Allah Azza wa Jal keep us on the straight path. However, how do you do it? He said, Ali Yassiru wa la tu'assiru. He said, don't make things difficult for people when you're speaking to them when you're approaching them. You're not gonna go yelling at a guy, you, 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 you mubtadiya, kafir, uh, he's gonna knock you out. You're gonna approach someone nicely, in a nice manner, with nice akhlaq, with nice adab, and say, Habibi, this is, this is the issue. Do you know about such and such? Who told you this and that? Enjoining good, forbidding evil. With what? With the manners of the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ali He says, Yassiru wa la tu asiru wa bashiru wa la tu nafiru. Facilitate things to people. Make it easy for them. Give them glad tidings. Give them the good. Don't make them run away. Rawahu Bukhari. Don't make them run away. Don't make people scared. And then he says, I'm not going to pray now because of this monkey here that attacked me, keeps attacking me. And the guy stops, the, stops praying because uh, of, of your attitude. Imagine coming on the day of Qiyamah with this sin upon you. SubhanAllah, Allah Azza wa Jal uh, save us. And of course the hadith in the Tirmidhi, Man darra darra Allahu bihi wa man shakka shakka Allahu alayhi. Whoever harms people, Allah will harm him. And whoever is harsh with people, Allah will be harsh with them. So this is a what? A warning to all of us. And finally, SubhanAllah, this does mean finally, Allah Jalla wa Allah says, Ikhwa, as you go through your life now, you go through your life, as Muslims, as proud Muslims, enjoining good, forbidding evil, calling people to Islam, to Tawheed, explaining to them the beauty of Islam. Allah Azza wa Jal says, do not ever, ever sadden, as I said in that ayat before. And to finish it off from Surah At-Talaq, Allah Jalla wa Allah says, <coughs> at, the end of the, at the end of the 62nd ayat, 
ومن يتق الله يجعل له مخرجا and whoever fears Allah Allah will make a way for him whoever fears Allah Allah will make a way for you doesn't matter how desperate how bad you think the situation is if you fear Allah Allah will make a way for you to get out of that situation so if you're stuck in a place and you think there's no there's no saving me believe me ikhwa, if you fear Allah Allah says then he will make a way for you may Allah Jalla wa Allah reward you all may Allah Jalla grant all of you for those that are with the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam may Allah Jalla forgive our dead ones and may Allah Jalla guide our live ones to al-Islam Ikhwa, as I always say to you, anything wrong that I say, throw it away in the rubbish. Anything that goes against the Quran and the Sunnah, throw it away in the rubbish. My opinion doesn't matter. What matters is, قَالَ اللَّهُ وَقَالَ رَسُولُهُ عَلَيْهِ سَلَطُ سَلَمْ وَبِلَاهِ تُوْفِيقْ بَالْهِدَايَةِ وَاللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلْ عَالَمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ وَمَنَا الْكِتَى سَلُوا وَلَنَّبِيهِ يَعِي أنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك الله محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين أنك حميد مجيد اللهم اكفر للمسلمين ومسلمات اللهم اكفر للمسلمين ومسلمات اللهم اكفر للمؤمنين ومؤمنات اللهم عز الإسلام ومسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام ومسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام ومسلمين وادل الشرك ومشركين ودمر أدادين وحمي حوزة الإسلام يا رب العالمين اللهم أسلح إخوان المسلمين في بلاد الشام اللهم أسلح إخوان المسلمين في الأفريق في فلسطين وفي كل مكان يا ذو الجلال والإكرام اللهم انسر دينك وكتابك وسنة نبيك وإبادك الموحدين ربنا آتنا في دنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة حسنة وقنا أذاب النار سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يسفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين